of water that Well, good evening, all you beautiful Christian believers out there. <laughs> it's good to join with uh, everybody one more time in the name of the Lord. Um, I want to thank God for this opportunity to study his word, to teach his word. And again, as I minister to you, I minister to myself because God speaks through me and he also speaks to me. So I just thank God for the opportunity to share his word and um, the Bible tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need to hear the word of God. We need to study the word of God to get a deeper understanding of what God is trying to tell us in these trying times. Um, gossip ain't going to help you. You need the gospel. You need the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, uh, God bless all of you joining in. And uh, we challenge you to tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell everybody. You know, we studying the word of God on Wednesday, uh, Lord willing, or Thursday, or whenever we can. We're going to study the word of God and we're going to, you know, touch and agree so that God will be in our midst. Um this evening, I want to talk to you all about um, God's divine pleadings with all of us. And uh, what I mean is the, the mere fact that God, through all that's going on in our world today, God is still calling out to us. He's still reaching out to us. He still has his hand held out to us saying, come to me. Come to me, regardless of your situation, regardless of the condition of, of our world, God is still pleading with us. Come in, come on before it's too late. And, and that just shows the depth of the love of our God. He has not given up on us. You know, we'll give up on people, especially when they fall short. Uh, they do something shameful. You know, we thought they was one way and they, you know, hit hit a, a bump in the road or, you know, did something that we didn't think they'll do. We'll give up on them. But God has not given up on us. And hallelujah. I just thank God that he has not given up. He's still crying out to his people. He's still crying out to sinners. He still has his hand outstretched to backsliders. He's, he's, he's just pleading with humanity. Come to him. He is the answer. He has the answer to all our problems. Y'all pardon that interruption. Boy, I, I, people don't think I ever go to sleep. They think I need got to fix some plumbing all night long. But anyway... <laughs> I got other stuff to do. <laughs> um, so I just want you to, I just want to, I want you to hear God's voice this evening. I want you to, to feel the love that God has toward us and understand he looks beyond our faults and he reaches out to us still. <laughs> he reaches out to us like, uh, if any of you have children or anybody that you caring for, any young person, he's reaching out to us the same way we reach out to that young person when they, you know, do something that we told them not to do. When we we see they getting in trouble or see them hurt them, themselves. And, and so we, we, we don't stop loving them because they fell down. We reach out to them and we we love them harder. We We talk to them and we... We, we tell them more and more serious because 
We don't want to see our children hurt. We don't want to see our loved ones hurt. And the same way with our God, God does not want to see us hurt. He does not want us to be separated from him for eternity. God wants us to dwell with him for eternity. That's why he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. But have everlasting life with him. He wants us to be with him yet still. Even in, even in the condition our world is in, in, in today. God is pleading with us. I still love you. Mm. What a mighty God we serve. What a loving God. What a compassionate God that looks beyond our faults and sees the need that we have for a divine savior, for a God that, that can heal our land, that can heal our brokenness, that can heal our sins and wash us from our sins. God is still pleading with us. Nobody's perfect. He knows when Adam fell, that curse would be on all humanity. He knows that. And even in that, he sent us a remedy. That all we got to do is accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Repent of our sins and we'll be cleansed. We'll be counted righteous in his sight. We'll be justified instead of condemned. You know, we can't even compare that kind of love to any, any human being in this world. Because, you know, if we cross, if we cross somebody the wrong way, people, are, uh, they'll start thinking different about us they, they won't want to be bothered with us no more they'll stop dealing with us but the god we serve when when he sees us fall he reaches to us that much more <laughs> what a mighty god we serve what a loving god we serve and he wants that same mentality that he has to be in us that's why he said let this mind be in you that was also in christ okay so with that in mind um I want to read a verse um, in Luke 12 and 32, but we're going to be studying out of Isaiah chapter 1 and uh, several other verses. But uh, I want to read this verse to you because it's going to be a um, it's going to be a um, a theme throughout this, this study tonight. OK, uh, Luke chapter 12, verse number 32. It says, it says, um, fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. <laughs> it's the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants to bless us. God wants to give us, uh, you know, peace and joy and love and happiness he wants to give us all these blessings. He wants us to have life and more abundantly. God, he has so much stored up for us. It's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. All right. But we have a part to play in this receiving the kingdom, receiving the blessing. And that's what we want to talk about. We can't be living in a kind of way and then expect to receive the blessings that come from God. But in that, God is still looking beyond our faults and he's trying to get down to our heart. He's trying to change our mindset and he's, try he's, he's trying to change our character to fit what he has for us. We can't live a sinful life and then expect to, to, to reap the benefit of a holy life. It don't work like that. You got to come to God. You got to be obedient. Okay. So just keep in mind. God ain't. He's not withholding anything from you. Because he don't like you. Because he don't love you. All right? I want you to understand that. The Bible clearly tells us. Fear not. It's your father's good pleasure. To give you the kingdom. Alright. God ain't stingy with it. <laughs> he want to distribute. <laughs> but we are limiting God. We are limiting him. In his blessings. Because we are not obedient. We, we will not fall in his will. 
we will not, you know, conduct ourselves as the believers that he has called us to be, you know, and, you know, so we limit God. But I, I want you to understand something. God has blessings stored up for you with your name on it. That ain't just a song. That's 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 reality. That's the truth. <laughs> but in order to get it, you got to you got to turn to him and do it his way. You got to fall into his will and his way. Um so what we're going to do, we we're going to turn to Isaiah chapter number 1. And we're going to look at how God pleads with his people. All right. And then we're going to look at what's called an if then clause. OK. And. Um, if you do your part, then God will do his part. OK, we're going to look at that. So keep in mind, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So turn to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter one. And. Um, I'm going to read verse 2 and 3, and then I'm going to go down to uh, verse 16. Isaiah 1 and 2 says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Listen to what God is saying. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Ain't that something? The ox knows his owner. And the ass know his master's crib or donkey for y'all sensitive Christians. But Israel does not know my people does not consider. Ain't that something? <laughs> and folk got folk got the, the nerve to call us a donkey. <laughs> we ain't got the sense of a donkey. Many of us. Because the donkey knows his master. The ox knows his master. But we act like we don't know who our God is. <laughs> Lord have mercy. God says, listen. I have nourished and brought up children. And they have rebelled against me. Ain't that something? God, look how much God done blessed us. Look how far he brought us. Look how good he been to us. And we won't show forth the praises of him that brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. We forgot about the God that brought us. I'm going to tell you how you how you can tell if you, you know, some signs that you have have forgotten. You're not as committed as you used to be. You're not as faithful as you used to be to God. You don't pray like you used to. You do what you want to do. It ain't about God's will no more. It ain't about purpose. It ain't about his, his calling on your life. But it's about what you want to do. When you hear God's voice and you can hear it, you find something else to do. See, my brothers and sisters, when we when we start conducting ourselves like this, we we draw away from God. We put distance between us and God. And when we get far away from God, we put ourselves at risk to be overtaken by the enemy. But. This is the thing. This is the thing. God is saying, I nourished up. I nourished you up. I kept you. I'm the one that kept you. I raised you up. I brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I took you out the, the muck and miry and set your feet on the solid ground. I did that. You know I did that. But now you're in a place you don't forgot all about me. You're rebelling against me. That's what happened to the people of Israel. Now, we are still spiritual Israel uh, if we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So the same way he was talking to the people in the Bible, his chosen people, he's talking to us too if we claim to be his children. He raised us up and now we rebel against him. 
We don't treat people with no respect. Oh, we got a Mercedes. God done blessed us with a Mercedes. And if you got a Mercedes, I ain't talking about you. I don't know what y'all drive. I'm just using that as an example. <laughs> people are so sensitive. Oh, he talking about me. I ain't going to tune in no more. <laughs> Oh, y'all too sensitive. But anyway, God blesses us and then we forget all about him. We ain't as disciplined as we, we once were. We forget all about him. We pray for that nice house and God blesses us with it. We forgot about God. All right. So, but even in that, this is, and this is the point I want to make this evening. Even in that, if you feel like you have dis drawn away from God, distanced yourself from God, you feel like you don't hear his voice like you used to, you overwhelmed and, and, and with the cares of life, and you feel like God don't, you know, your relationship ain't as strong as you used to be, this is the, this is the, uh, the study for you. Even in that, God has the power to cast us down, to destroy us. To, to, you know, just disregard us, to disown us. But does God do that to us? No. He's, he continues to stretch forth his hand to us and say, please come to me. I love you. You turn your back on me, but I'm still here. We can mend our relationship. We can, we can get stronger. We can, we can bind that relationship and I'll show you more love than you ever seen before. <laughs> That's a mighty God we serve. Mm. All right, so let's let's look down at um. Now I I just I'm gonna have to skip through because I don't really have time to to dig all the way down this like I want to. But at your leisure, go back and read Isaiah chapter one from you know the whole chapter and see what God is saying to his people as a result of their rebellious attitude towards him. Okay. So, but even in that, God says this in verse 16, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil from your doing from before my eyes cease to do evil. Learn to do well, seek judgment, Relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, and plead for the, for the, for the widow. All right? So what is God saying? We can, we can rebuild this relationship. We, we, can, we can, you know, bind this disconnect. And we can come back closer together, but you got to be washed. You got to be cleaned. You can't continue to turn your back on me and keep going the opposite way and expect things to go right. It's not going to work like that. Judgment going to come. All right. It's going to come a day when, it, when, when you ain't going to hear the, the Lord's voice pleading with you anymore. Because, the, you know, judgment will have to come. But while we, while we operating under his grace and his mercy, he's pleading with us. Wash you and make you clean. All right. Put away the evil from your doings. And from, and from before my eyes, cease to do evil. You know, even though we're going through a pandemic, even though all this going on in our world, people still got wickedness in their heart. They still hate their neighbor. They still can't get along with people. They, they hearts are still wicked. No love. The Bible even say in the last days, the love of many will wax cold. There's some cold people in this world. All right. And the list goes on and on. But even in all that, God is pleading with us. <laughs> Get right. You in this temporary world, it's going to pass. And if you ain't got... If you ain't got yourself together, you know, if you ain't came to me and got our relationship fixed, it's going to be bad news on the other side. 
So God, he's pleading with us. Look what he says to his people. And again, he's talking to the people of Israel, but he's also talking to us, believers. Mm, that's some good water right there. Jesus must turn that water into wine like he, like he always do. But All right, verse 18, listen, listen to the voice of God. All right, even though he knows the, the attitude and the rebellions and, and the wickedness that's in his people's heart, listen to what he says. He says, come now, Isaiah 1 and 18, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins have been, may be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Can't you hear? Can't you hear God speaking to us? Do you feel the love and, and mercy of God pleading with his people? Come. And he's just not saying, you know, come when you get ready. He's saying, come now. That's how important this thing is to him. Don't wait till tomorrow. Come now. Let us reason together. Let us talk about it. You know, some people don't want to hear you. They don't want to talk to you about it no more. You done, you done backstabbed them. You done, you, you know, you done lied on them. You done stole something from them. You done, you know, caused them to lose their job just so you can get they, they, they position. You know, it's all kind of dirty stuff going on in this world. But... If somebody did you like that, you would not want to any more dealings with them at all. Period. Don't don't call my name. Don't don't even come my way. But look at what we done done to God. Look at how we treat him. Look at how we disown him. And the only time we reach out to him is when we in trouble. When calamity all around. When we can't make it by ourselves. When we don't know what to do. Then we cry out to him. Look how we do God. Like he a genie in the lamp. We need three wishes, Lord. Grant us our wish. And then once you give us what we want, be on your way until we need you the next time. God don't want no relationship like that. God is saying, let's fix this breach in our relationship. I ain't done nothing wrong. I ain't done nothing to you. You have separated yourself from me. He said, your sins are like scarlet. I should, you know, the wages of sin is death. I should just, just cast you off from my presence. But I'm pleading with you this evening. Come to me. Come now. Let us reason together. Look at our God. That's the God we serve. He want to mend this broken relationship that we have with him. He wants to, he wants to love on us. He wants to bless us. But in order that he might bless us, in order that he might give us, give us the, the goodness of his kingdom, we got to get our relationship right with him first. That's first. That's why, you know, the older generation would say, put God first. You got to have his, your, your relationship with God right first. That's first and foremost. All right. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. But God's claims come first. All right? Come now and let us reason together. When the last time you reason with God? Say, Lord, you know what? I haven't been right. I haven't been committed. I haven't been doing your will. Lord, I've fallen short. I haven't been operating in my anointing. I haven't been, you know, seeking your face and what you want me to do with this life that you gave me. Lord, I, I, I've been doing my own thing and I have not been worrying about your purpose that you have on, you know, for me in this, in this world. When the last time have you pleaded with God, say, Lord, cleanse me, wash me. Bring me back to a right relationship with you. When have it been that important to you to say, Lord, I need to know more of you. 
I need you. I need more of you in my life. When have you pleaded with God, Lord, accept me as I am and bring me back to your ways? He's pleading with us daily. All right. H have you ever, you know, just for example, we're going to move on. Have you ever, you know, you know, just been in that place where you just, everywhere you go, God is speaking to you. You hear it on the radio. You overhear somebody, you know, else conversating. They talking about God and, and you know, what you need to hear. You know, when you tune in to uh, Bible study or, or hear the preacher preaching or, you know, on the TV, a commercial, God is speaking to you. You can't escape it. Have you ever been in that place? Don't turn your don't turn a deaf ear to God. God is trying to tell you something. He's trying to lead you to a place. Your blessing is right there. Your breakthrough is right there. But you keep turning a deaf ear to you, to him, and he can't give it to you because you're being disobedient. You got to just humble yourself to Almighty God and the blessing is right there for you. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But you got to do his will in order to get his blessing. Now, this is going to lead us to the if-then clause. All right. So, God is pleading with us. He has not given up on us. That's good news tonight. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what you, you need from God. I don't know if you're searching for your purpose or your calling or, you know, trying to understand what God has anointed you to do, you know, but God has not given up on you. You might have failed, fallen short, but God has not given up on you. You might be in the, in the pit, you know, and it might not even be your fault. You know, just circumstances and situations in life got you in a place, a dark place, a, a, a deep place, and, you know, you don't know how to get out of this situation. God has not given up on you. You may have backslid and it was your fault and you don't know how to write your relationship with God. God has not given up on you. That's good news tonight. And his, his, his plea with you tonight is come now and let's reason together. <laughs> oh my God. You don't get right and go back to church. You just, you just come now. You just come to him. You pray to him. He ain't no invisible friend. He'll speak to you so clear, just like I'm speaking to you right now. Mm. Come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. <laughs> Though they be red like crimson, they stain. And it, you know, it is it, no, you know, when, when you see that crimson stain, ain't nothing you can get. You can't get that dye out of your, you know, white clothes. It's, it's down in the thread. <laughs> oh, Lord. Y'all remember that red clay mud? But children don't play outside no more. And them grass stains. Now they make them, now they make jeans like that. <laughs> <laughs> they make them dirty. You buy them out the store looking dirty. But you mess around and go outside with your church clothes on and you get them stains in your... See, back in the day, we had different set of clothes. Y'all might be too young to understand what I'm talking about. You had the church, you had the Sunday clothes, then you had the play clothes, then you had, you know, you had school clothes too. But... um. Don't go outside and play in them church clothes. <laughs> and I ain't got no better sin than run outside. Ain't nothing but clay out there in grass. Them knees be red and green. Because <laughs> grandma knows she couldn't get that stain out of there. But God is saying that about our sin. Ain't nothing you can do to get the stain of sin out of your life. And if you enter into the judgment if you enter into eternity and stand before god at the judgment with these stains in your spirit listen ain't nothing you can do about it 
So he's pleading with us now that we can correct this thing. There's a way to get that crimson stain out of our life, out of our spirit, out of our soul. And that's by, by being washed by the blood of Jesus. That crimson stain becomes white as snow. <laughs> Can't y'all see that? It, it's like the sin was never there. When, when Jesus died on the cross, he forgives our sin and casts them as far away from us as it is the east is from the west. <laughs> when God washes us, it's as if we had not sinned at all. That's good news tonight. That's what God is pleading with us. Come now, let us reason together. Let me fix that sin situation we got so that you might be justified when you appear before me in the judgment. I want to spend eternity with you. And not only that, I want to bless you here while you yet live. Let me wash your sins away. That don't mean we, we won't sin. Now, let, let, me, let me just interject this real quick and then we're going to move, move on. That don't mean, just because you've been forgiven, don't mean you're going to be sinless. Because we all still fall short of the glory of God. But we don't choose a sinful lifestyle. We may sin, but we are convicted and then God forgives us and he strengthened us to overcome that sin. All right. But you can't choose a sinful lifestyle. All right. And then expect to be in a right relationship with God. That's that's what we're talking about. All right. It's, it's a difference. All right. We sin. But then we are forgiven whenever we repent and we are strengthened to overcome so we won't go back to that. All right. So but choosing a whole sinful lifestyle and accepting it as a part of our life, that's a whole that's a horse of a different color. All right. That's what Jesus. That's what God is uh, pleading with his people. Turn from those wicked ways. Come to me. Let me cleanse you and I, I'll bless you. All right. So then this leads us to the if then clause. And we're going to go through um, what it says here in Isaiah. And we're going to go to um, a couple of more um, verses in the Bible that uh, we can identify the if then clause um, with the Bible. So verse 19 says, uh, after God pleads with his people to, you know, come to him and He'll cleanse us from our sin. He said, if you, be if you be willing and obedient, then you shall eat the good of the land. All right. If you be willing and obedient, then you will eat the good of the land. All right. So that's, that's the, the if then clause. If you do your part, then God is going to do his part. If you be obedient, then you will receive the blessings that come from God. All right. Just like if you pay your light bill, then your lights will stay on. But it's a flip side of that. If you don't pay your light bill, then your lights will be cut off. <laughs> so the if then works both ways. All right. So verse 20 says, but if you refuse. And rebel, you, then you shall be devoured with the sword. See what I'm saying? This is what God is telling his people. Now, I'm pleading with you to, to write this broken relationship. Let us get back together on one accord. Let us touch and agree. Make me head of your life. Make me first. Put away your idols. All right? Choose me and my will. All right? Then I will bless you. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Alright. So. But if you don't. After all this pleading I'm doing with you. If you refuse to hear my word. If you refuse to do my will. And you rebel against me. In spite of all of that. Then you will be devoured with the sword. It's kind of like. Um, uh, when Moses. Told Pharaoh, 
God told, uh, God said, let my people go. And he wouldn't let the people go. So God allowed plagues to come in and on Egypt. And, and every plague that came in, uh, Pharaoh's heart was, was, was softened to the point where he pleaded with Moses, tell your God to stop the flies. Tell him to stop the frogs. Tell him to stop the, the hail and all these plagues. But soon as the, the hail stopped or the frogs left or the, the flies or the lice or the locusts left, then Pharaoh's heart began to be hardened once more. See? And so ultimately, God sent the, uh, the plague of death on the firstborn in the land. And that's when Pharaoh let the people go. So, but we don't want to be refusing and rebelling against God like Pharaoh did. We, we, can, we can stop a whole lot of that unnecessary stuff. Now, you're going to face your share of problems in this world, okay? The Bible even say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Now, you're going to have your share of, of problems in this world, whether you're a saint or a sinner, okay? But... In order to receive the blessing that come from God, the lasting blessing, eternal blessing, all right, in this earth and in the world to come, you're going to have to do his will. You're going to have to be obedient to him. All right. That's the key. That's what we're talking about. And see, God, God is pleading with us so bad, so much because he has so much in store to bless us with, but we can't receive it until we humble ourselves to do his will. See, that's how it's operate. So if you be willing and obedient, then you shall eat the good of the land. That's what God is telling us. Try him. Try him. That's a promise. If you be willing and obedient, if you do your part, I'm going to do my part. If you do your part and be obedient to what I'm telling you to do, step out on faith and try me, do what I ask you to do, do my will, then I'm, I'm so faithful, I will do just what I said. That's how it works. But God is also faithful to his word in the, in the other part of this thing. If you refuse and rebel, all right, you shall be devoured with the sword. You don't think uh, God was pleading with the people in Noah's time when Noah was preaching it's going to rain? He was pleading with the people. Come on. Come now. It's going to rain. Judgment's coming. The rain was not just, you know, the water from the sky. It was judgment pronounced on the world because of their wickedness and their rebellion against God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And the same thing going to happen again. But it ain't going to be by water. It's going to be by fire. And God has got the same. He's got the same theme going. He is pleading with us. Come now and let us reason together. Let us fix this broken relationship. If you are in re right relationship with God. You ought to be proclaiming it on the mountaintops to everybody you know that you don't know. If you don't know Jesus, come now. The time is at hand. You ought to be telling this world. All right. So let's let's go to another. Um, let's go to another if then clause. Okay. I got a few more minutes. Let's go to a real familiar one in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. A real familiar if-then clause. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. In verse number 14. And we're going to see this if-then theme. This if-then clause and we're going to see the pleading of our God to, to his people. All right. God has so much stored up for us. <laughs> he said, I has not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered the hearts of man the things that God has for them that love him, do his will, that's obedient to him. 
But if you read further, it, it'll tell you, but it has been uh, revealed to us by his spirit. It, it is no secret about how good God want to be to us, his chosen vessels, his people that do his blessed will. He's got blessings stored up for us. Just read his word. Let's look at this. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Y'all see the if and then? I'm not sure if you ever noticed that, but here's the thing. God is pleading with us, but we have got to do our part in order for him to uphold his part. If we, we want our land healed, but have we, have we humbled ourselves yet? Have we prayed? Listen at this now. He said, if my people, I'm not asking for sinners to do this. I'm not asking for sinners, the people that don't know me. I'm not asking for Muslims or Hindus or, or whatever other God they believe in. I'm not asking for them to do this. I'm asking for my people to do this. I'm pleading for my people to humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways. My people, I shouldn't even be pleading with you, with you to do this. It should be your pleasure to pray and to humble yourself and to seek my faith and to turn from your wicked ways. I shouldn't even have to ask you to do this. But the key to this whole verse is if. If you do your part, I'm faithful. I'm going to do my part. He said, then will I hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sin. And then I will heal the land. And notice in, this, in these verses, God ain't say if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves or pray or seek my faith or turn from their wicked way. Now, some of us pray but we ain't seeking God's face. <laughs> we got multiple choice here. We doing, we doing part of it, but we ain't doing all of it. Yeah, we praying. We, we, we study the word, but we sure ain't turning from our wicked ways. <laughs> hmm. This an and. It's all inclusive. And so the promise the promise attached to this, then will I hear from heaven. God ain't saying I will hear from heaven or heal the land or forgive their sin. God, all this all inclusive. I'm going to do all this for you if you do what I ask you to do. Now, there's a flip side to this. And we don't read past 14. We don't read past verse 14. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Let's go down to verse 19. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them. Ain't that so? <laughs> if you turn away and go seeking after other gods, then you're going to be plucked up out of the land. You know, just because you got new, new stuff don't mean it's going to last. The same God that allowed you to get it is the same God that can, can allow the man to come back and get it. You know you got it from rent center. You just acting like it's yours. <laughs> I just mess with you. But what I'm saying is, don't put your trust in in temporary riches and act like you got it all together. All right. Because nothing in this world lasts forever. The only way is it'll be sustainable riches is if God bless you with it. And if you continue to be obedient to him. 
That's why he say, come to me and I'll give you true riches. Love, joy, peace. You can be rich in Christ. Rich in mercy. Rich in Christ Jesus. And them kind of blessings, the world didn't give it and the world cannot. Ain't no rental center can take no joy from you. <laughs> they can take that TV, but you still got joy. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord have mercy But the, the thing God is telling us this evening If you do your part Then I'll do my part you can, you can count on me doing my part I am faithful To my word So brothers and sisters Listen Be obedient And God has blessings for you It's the Father's good pleasure To give you the kingdom Try him Try him and see. He said, he says in, in Micah, I think it's Micah, he said, try me and see. Won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing? You won't have room enough to receive. Prove me now. That's what he said. <laughs> Alright, let's do another if then clause. I believe we got another uh a little bit more time. Let's go to uh Deuteronomy. Chapter 28. And we love to read this too. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with having your favorite scripture. Ain't nothing wrong with having, you know, this, oh, this is my scripture. All right. But when you have your scripture, make sure you read past your scripture to see what God is saying. Make sure you read before your scripture to get a full understanding of your scripture. <laughs> So we're going to read some of y'all scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we're going to see the if then clause again. Okay. And again, God is pleading with us to do our part because he has blessings attached to it. He has, he has blessings attached to it. He has so many blessings attached to, you know, doing his will that, I mean, like he says, I have not seen ears and have not heard. We can't even imagine how good God wants to be to us until we be obedient to him. How many doors he has to open for us until we are obedient to him. So listen, as, um, Deuteronomy 28. In verse number one, it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. If you, listen, if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord and observe to do his commandments, if you do your part, verse number two, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if you shall hearken to the voice of the Lord. If you listen to the voice of the Lord, then you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. And the Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up before you to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall command a blessing upon you. But the only way all these blessings going to come upon you is if you hearken or listen diligently to the voice of the Lord. That's the if part. If you do your part, then I will bless you. I mean, bless you indeed. <laughs> you be so blessed. I mean, I, you know, people see you come and they say, oh, they must be blessed. <laughs> they blessed coming in and going out. <laughs> you can't do nothing but be coming in or going out, ain't it? Either you coming in or you going out. So, and you blessed whether you come in or go out. But it comes as a result of you 
listening diligently to the voice of the Lord. We love reading that verse, don't we? We'll read all the way down to 14, but you got to read verse 15. Because <laughs> it's a flip side to this. All right. If you listen diligently and be obedient to God, he will bless you indeed. He will bless you with all these blessings. He'll command a blessing upon you. But let's go down to verse 15. But it shall come to pass if you will not listen to the voice of the Lord to observe all his commandments and his statute which I command thee this day that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. <laughs> Cursed shall you be in the city. Cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your land and the increase of your kind. And the flocks of your sheep. Cursed shall you be when you come in. And cursed shall you be when you go out. If you don't listen. If you rebel against God. If you be willingly disobedient. To the voice of the Lord. If you harden your heart. If you willingly harden your heart. Now you hear God's voice. I'm talking to the people of God now. You hear God's voice. You hear him talking to you. If you willingly and, and you know, you choose to be disobedient and not want to do what thus saith the Lord, then he says, I will allow these curses to come upon you. We don't want that. And, and not only does we not want that, listen, I want you to really listen. We don't want that. God don't want it either. God don't want to see people cursed. God don't, he don't want to see, he don't want people to distance themselves from him. It don't matter what you have done, what your sins look like. Go back to Isaiah chapter one. He says, come now and let us reason together. He don't want, he don't want to see nobody die and then, you know, spend eternity or be, you know, destroyed like the, like the devil and his angels. He don't want to see that. He want us, he want us to be with him in that mansion that he prepared for us. He want us to be uh, with him throughout eternity. And all we got to do is accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Repent of your sin. Repent of your sin. And be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for, for the remission of your sin. And he'll give you the blessed gift of the Holy Ghost. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they be believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they've been sent? Oh, how beautiful are the feet of them that take the word of the Lord and proclaim the blessed word gospel of good news. But God is pleading with us tonight, brothers and sisters. I believe that's about our time. Our time is up. <clears throat> But think about this if-then clause. Think about how God is pleading with us tonight. He's saying, come now, let us reason together. A plead is an emotional appeal. God is putting all of his heart into us. Saying, come now. Don't shrug me off. Don't, don't act like you don't hear what I'm saying to you. Come now. The problems you're facing that you don't know what to do, you don't know how to handle, just come now. Come to me. I got all the answers. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I give you rest to that weary soul. Come now. Come to me. 
Stop seeking the answer from all of, all these other places, all these these other things in this world. Ha hasn't it let you down enough? Haven't you been disappointed enough? Hear what thus saith the Lord. Come now and let us reason together. An appeal. That's what God is doing. He's appealing to us. An appeal is a serious or earnest request. And can't you, can't you hear how serious God is being with us tonight? He loves us, my brothers and sisters. He loves us. Come now and let us reason together. Saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like lamb's wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the, the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. I hate to leave. I always like to um, spend time with y'all. Um, it's a blessing that brothers and sisters can come together and study the word of God. Be on one accord. Prayerfully, your faith is strengthened and you are motivated. You are encouraged. All right. This is God called on your life tonight to experience something that you have not experienced before in him. All right. This is God called on, on you know, in your life that you will experience a level of blessing, a level in this life that you, you, you may not have experienced before. But it's going to take your willingness and your obedience. All right. You're going to have to hear his voice. And you're going to have to do it his way. Not your own way. You done figured it out enough. And you done got yourself in enough trouble. All right. The devil done have it, had his way with you. Now turn to God. Turn over to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Hear his voice. And do it his way. And he, God's got, he got so much in store for you. It's, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. My prayer for you is that you find the faith and strength. To just come to him. Come to him. And he'll give you rest. He'll bless you. He'll bless you indeed. He'll, these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So y'all brothers and sisters, y'all have a good evening. And y'all be safe. Continue to plead the blood of Jesus over your life, your brothers and sisters, your friends, your family. And pray for our country. Pray for our leadership. Uh, pray for our, for our counties, officials, you know, just pray. Pray for everybody, all right? We love you, but more importantly, God loves you, and he wants to spend eternity with you. God bless you all, and until next time, 